This is your high security clearance for an early access look at the brand new DLC for Jurassic World Evolution 2, the Secret Species Pack. In this video, I will show you the four new hybrids, the amazing new skins, and the new animations. The Secret Species Pack launches tomorrow, March 13th, on all platforms. But in this video, we'll uncover the secrets of the Secret Species Pack a day early. Welcome to my mini hybrid research facility, where we will be releasing our new hybrids and conducting some totally ethical tests. I'll also be building a big research facility for all seven hybrids we now have in the game. For that build and many any other creative builds, subscribe to the channel. All right, here we go. Whoa. Oh, off to a great start with that skin. You know I love good skins. Whoa. Whoa, hold on a second. Wow. Hey, why are you looking at the giant vat of poison right now? I think you're radioactive enough, okay? <laughs> Aww. For social, it's maybe a little dangerous that you're just, you know, shoving that horn right into its into its throat. Getting pretty close to the jugular, I would assume. <laughs> all right, before we start looking at, you know, the, the eating animation and of course all of the combat combos, I want to compare it to just a normal Sinoceratops. It, it's so much bigger. It's so much bigger. What the heck? <laughs> Look at the size difference there. <laughs> the little look again. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's awesome. It's like a parent being like, get your elbows off the table. All right, what we are releasing now is an extra strong rebel. And rebel is going to be taking on many a dinosaurs. We have the Scorpius Rex, we have Toro, we have Big Edie. And we're going to see, we're going to see rebel take them all on. By the way, even though they do eat from the fish feeder, you can see that they can eat from vegetation as well. Uh, specifically, they would want ground fiber. Come on then, you can do it, Rebel. I believe in you. Look at that guy's taking notes. <laughs> and down it goes. I was kind of hoping for maybe a bit more of a... Th <laughs> Sorry, that guy in the background is going absolutely mental. Look at him, he's clapping. Okay, now I want to see how she faces up against Toro. Oh, I think... Did the horn go into the throat? It kind of looked like it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, for science, I've gone back in time and we're gonna see it again. And we'll use the slow motion feature this time around. Here she comes, here she comes. Okay, let's see what happens. Is he gonna collapse again? I don't know, I'm not too impressed so far. Let's see what happens against Big Edie. Is it the same thing? It's the same thing. I can't really figure out what it's supposed to look like. It tries to go in or something, but then it just like... Ugh. I don't know. It doesn't have the best kill animations, I gotta say. And maybe... Maybe you shouldn't expect that from a herbivore, really. But I mean, it's... It's a huge Ceratopsian. Surprise, mother Oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Dang, that's good. <laughs> wow. Here we have the Spinoceratops in the species viewer. And as you can see, we have the angel skin and the slightly darker, and I do mean slightly darker, rebel skin. Wow, sorry. 
Wow. <laughs> I'm very... Wow. So if we do this one and then we change to nighttime. There you go, little glow stick dino. I initially kind of dismissed this species as just a Sinoceratops with a sail. And while that is technically true, I think the bigger size and the amazing skins, including the Lux skins, do set it apart from the Sinoceratops and make it a fun addition to the roster. I see myself getting some use out of this species, even though I'm not the biggest fan of hybrids personally. I don't think it looks too out of place in a dinosaur park. I am a bit underwhelmed by the kill animations. I think they lack creativity, especially when you compare them to a super creative kill animation from another hybrid in this very pack. But for me as a sandbox builder, fighting animations aren't that big of a factor. And overall, I'd rank it as my second favorite hybrid from this pack. My complete final thoughts on the DLC as a whole, I get into at the end of the video. So if you're curious about that, stick around until the end. First, we have way more to look at. Whoa. That was quite an epic entrance. Oh! And in the background, the social is happening. <laughs> the little wiggle, that was adorable. Oh, that's funny. He hooks the horn under the foot. That's hilarious. Stop looking at the vat of poison. <laughs> okay, so for comparison, I have a regular Triceratops. And yeah, you can see that again, there is a just a massive size difference there. What are you thinking about, hmm? I don't think a whole lot is going on in there right now. Oh my god, they're, they're the same size. It was an illusion all along. They're not bigger at all. I mean, you know, aside from, you know, the, 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 the obvious um, accessories here. But you know, it's, it's not about the size, it's about how you use it. I'm sure these are perfectly serviceable horns. Oh, that's cute. It's like an idol anime. Oh god. I like that. Would you would you please all stop ruining this moment for me? Sometimes it does a little head shake. Honestly, it just kind of looks like it's hearing voices or something. I don't know. I think the animation is actually supposed to represent that it's sort of you can see like the plates moving when it it like touches it with the frill. So I think it's like scratching an itch. So it is actually quite nice, <laughs> but from a distance it just looked like it was hearing voices. Okay, this one has a big itch. You should see a doctor about that. Yeah, I like that. Seriously, see someone about that itch, mate. No. Oh. I think that's cute. Enough of the cute stuff. Let them fight. He looks appropriately concerned. And it falls again. It knocks it. Its life flashes before its eyes and then... I don't know. I mean, I guess it's fine. It's not... It's not spectacular, I think. I think a flop is always disappointing. Here he goes. Oh. Don't you dare. This will never cease to like confuse me. Like I dislike this entire group, except this one, he's cool. I like this entire group, except these two, these two suck. <laughs> oh, that was brutal. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. While the body is getting lifted up. <laughs> is it gonna flop? No. Oh, wow. Oh, she tanked a hit. Good for you. In the meantime, though, I've made a batch with all Lux skins. So let's hope that the skins just make up for a lot. They do, don't they? They do. There you go.
go lovely. Now, the thing they've done is all of these species have... Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> they all have one Lux skin, which means that uh, the bioluminescence is always going to show up in the same coloration. So, for example, for the Stegoceratops, it's all this green pattern. But let's check out the coloration in daylight. So, we have quite a few neutral tones. We have some bright green. That's quite nice. We have like a pinkish purple and we have like this acid kind of green. And this is our Lux skin. Stegoceratops was never gonna win me over. It's too cartoony for me. It's my least favorite of the pack and I don't see myself using it often as I also pretty much never use Stegoceratops in the first game. Unfortunately for it, several animals now have bioluminescence, so that alone isn't enough to make it all that special anymore. The big thing Stegoceratops does have going for it are cute animations. The solo animations it does and a really fun social animation. But just like Spinoceratops, the kills aren't very inspired and it doesn't use its Thagomizer, which is like, well, what's the point then? In a game that already has a lot of ceratopsids and in a pack that has two, in my opinion, it's just always gonna lose out against better options to add to your parks. And of course, we're saving the Spineraptor for last, so let's welcome the new and improved Ankyloticus to Jurassic World Evolution 2. And honestly, it might be the most exciting addition if it turns out to be the first and only sauropod that can fight back. Oh, and look at the face! Oh, it's so- oh, it's- oh, the face is so much better. It's so chunky! I love it! Alright, so the differences between the Ankyloticus in Jurassic World Evolution 2 and the Ankyloticus in Jurassic World Evolution 1 are absolutely insane. I mean, it's not just the face. Uh, I just keep harping on the face because it's, I think, the most important improvement because the face of the previous Ankyloticus was just the worst. Uh, but also just the entire body is different. The osteoderms um, are very, very different with these. Um, like the, the previous version had more just spikes or spines. This one has some actual plating going on. The tail is much shorter, which makes the club make more sense, you know, because there's... It's gonna be some actual power behind that, hopefully at least. Might be a weird angle, but I think they're gonna do something with the tail. Yeah, see? <laughs> That's cute, that makes sense. And that like, you know, draws attention to that interesting feature for a sauropod, a clubbed tail. It has such a cute face. Oh my God, she's, she just looks snatched. Look at them cheekbones. I like that so much, the little feet! Well, actually, really big feet, but you know what I mean. Okay, so they've improved the face of the Ankyloticus, but have they improved on the major issue with sore pods in general, but specifically with the Ankyloticus, who definitely looks like it's built, like it should be able to fight back, but didn't previously. Does it use that clubbed tail to fight back? No, it doesn't. The only difference is that small carnivores, like Velociraptor, or even like Spinoraptor, just don't attack it at all. The reason I hoped it would defend itself was because the original little description that Frontier supplied as content creators, which was going to be the forum text, very much implied that it would fight back. After I discovered that it doesn't, I did point that out to them and they've changed it to a different text for the forum post. But I really thought they had done something special here, which is why I emphasized it so much in my showcase and it proved pretty impossible to edit around that because it is so ingrained in my showcase. I'm sorry about that. All right, here we go. Let's see what we have. I do want to, again, give Frontier praise for the changes that they made to the model, because honestly, that's fantastic. They, they done a good thing, and then they sort of forgot to do the other good thing we were hoping for. Honestly, I would love to know, like, what their reasoning behind it was. Uh, let's quickly reveal the Luxkin. 
There you go. My final thoughts on the Ankyloticus are gonna get an addendum at the end of this video, but in short, I guess I'd say I think it's a missed opportunity. The redesign of the model is much appreciated, but the Ankyloticus still feels lackluster as an armored sauropod with a clubbed tail that doesn't defend itself when attacked. Even though I like how it looks, I can't help but wonder if I'll really end up using it often. Only time will tell. I might still gravitate more towards my classic sauropod species, although I do appreciate how different the Ankyloticus is. The social animation is good, at least it's an example of the animal using its clubbed tail, which is nice. The skins are good too, and definitely better than most of the sauropods, but falls short of the level of skin design that we saw for the Brachiosaurus in the previous update. I'd rank it my third favorite of the pack. Save the best for last. At least I hope so. So, so happy that I can finally release a Spinoraptor into Jurassic World Evolution 2. Here they come. Oh, they kept the scream. Yes. Uh, oh God, they're escaping. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie! Yeah, the model's pretty much the same. Thankfully, wouldn't have wanted them to change a thing, honestly. The pattern looks to be a little bit more pronounced than it was in Jurassic World Evolution 1. That's always a welcome thing. Wow, and here are the Lux skins, just releasing a batch of those for your entertainment. Of course, we will be looking at all of the skins in the Species Fury in a little bit. Ah, that's kind of cute. It's sort of like, you know, they're they're maybe a little mad at each other, but then at the end they do a little they do a little cuddle. Hold on. What, what one second. One second. What kind of fashion statement is this? You painted your middle toenail? You painted your middle toenail. What a little fashionista. What a little trendsetter you are. I always love it when they give like scary animals animations like this that just make them cute i like that but yeah that's 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 a choice hopping on that's similar to what they did in the first game I'm snatching a little fish i like how it's holding onto the uh, the ledge there for balance it's <laughs> it's trying to grab its own tail that's hilarious! No freaking way! <laughs> oh, I love that. Now, considering their batch size of just three, I'm not expecting any group hunting or pack hunting, but it's worth checking out to see what happens when we release a Spinosaurus. That's kind of cool. You guys know that from Jurassic World Evolution 1, I actually really like using, uh, or I liked using the Spinoraptor as juvenile Spinosauruses. And that's something that we can now do in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And I think that looks pretty convincing. All right, it looks like only one of them. Yeah, definitely. So there's no pack hunting here. They didn't take that from the, uh, from the Velociraptor. Sort of jumps on, scratches out its flank. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> the way the tongue hangs out. It's like a gory swan lake. All right, let's see if they have a different animation with a different sized opponent, the Baryonyx. <laughs> Whoa, 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 oh my, uh, well, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely different. Okay, uh, yep, that's different. Oh my god. And it jumps on top, whoa. <gasps> did you see what it did there? It protected its eye with the, uh, with the third eyelid. <gasps> that 
was impressive. That not so much. Now there's one thing we always have to do. You know the rules, and so do I. Oh, that's just... that's just... brutal. It's a cool kill, but I think this is the exact same kill animation that the Australovenator has for goats. Alright, so it definitely does the pack chase behavior, confirmed. Here comes the other one. <laughs> it's time for everyone's favorite part of the video, or maybe just mine, because I'm a psychopath. But we are about to find out what the guest kill animation looks like. This is gonna end badly. Oh! Yep. Oh, you are so lucky. You are so lucky! <laughs> Everybody dead, but you lived. I wonder for how long you've been kept alive with a purpose. Oh, you have been kept alive with a purpose. That was just a joke. <laughs> oh, good sir. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh, look at him kicking his foot. Oh, oh! That is... That is very brutal. <gasps> That's amazing. Not for you, though. <laughs> Tossed it through the wall. It's a great, it's a great guest kill animation. You really have to do it in slow motion to be able to like appreciate it because it's so fast, but it's so good, like well done. We have the Spinoraptor in the species viewer. Let's see what types of skin colors this, um, this species has to offer. Looks pretty good. Oh, I really, I really like that blue. I will say it's not giving me the wow factor that, for example, we had with Uteraptor and Pyroraptor. It really seems that feathered species are bringing out more of the creativity and, and, and colorations when it comes with the skins. But it has good skins. It just has good skins. And it's nice that the Lux pattern shows up purple just in daytime. That looks pretty good as well. Because obviously you're going to want to use the Lux pattern a lot. And it looks, it looks good with pretty much every... Well, maybe not every color. Well, actually, yeah, no, I don't hate that. <laughs> My beloved Spinoraptor, here you are, finally. Spinoraptor is the only one of the three hybrids from Jurassic World Evolution 1 that I really wanted to have back, so I am thrilled that it is finally in the game. I think this hybrid looks passable as a real dinosaur, considering how weird some real dinosaurs look, like Spinosaurus or like Concavenator. That's one of the big reasons why it is easily my favorite hybrid in the pack. I think Spinoraptor is a fun addition to the park, made even better by the fantastic animations. The human kill animation is another great example of Frontier having some psychotic kind of creativity when it comes to these animations. They have mastered this art form, and I'm just appreciating it with a big grin on my face. By the way, if you don't like using Spinoraptor as its own species, I got a lot of use out of it in the first game by having it substitute as a baby Spinosaurus. If you want some more fake baby suggestions for Jurassic World Evolution 2, I've done a video on that. Before we get to my final thoughts on the pack, we should look at two more additions included. Bioluminescent skins for the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor. For these two hybrids, the Lux skin is a base skin. It's not a Lux pattern that you can apply on top of any base skin color. It works the same way as the movie skins. Would have been nice if, just like with the hybrids from the pack, 
We could just apply it as a pattern to whatever our favorite base skin color happens to be, because these Lux skins lose all of their magic in daylight. That feels a bit nitpicky though, I do think it's an awesome addition, and I wish they had applied it to the Scorpius Rex as well, but I guess that hybrid missed out since it's from a different DLC, whereas the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor are base game species. So in total, if you buy this pack, you get four new hybrids and two new bioluminescent skins. Normally my pack showcases don't end with a dramatic final thoughts section like this, but this was the first pack where I felt it was needed. And I considered making it a separate video since this is a showcase and not necessarily a review, but I think it needs to be in here, even if it makes the video drag on a little bit. By the way, if you are still watching, Thank you! If you've been enjoying the video, please give it a like. These kinds of videos are a lot of work and it was a stressful couple of days making this. I hope my sleepless nights paid off. I've been campaigning to get Spinoraptor back in the game, so I am thrilled to finally have it back. I am in the privileged position that I got this DLC for free from Frontier, but I would have bought this pack anyway. Just for the Spinoraptor alone, I would have bought it. I wanted it that much. Don't judge me for being irresponsible with my money. I have my mother for that. That being said, I believe these original Jurassic World Evolution 1 hybrids should have been either included in the base game at launch or get added for free on one of the anniversaries because they were already a part of the first game. Now that would have been a big gift, adding all of these skins and animations which they didn't have in the first game. But bringing them back in a full price DLC doesn't feel quite right. However, that's the way it turned out. All right, gotta roll with the punches. But then I would have at least liked to have seen a slight discount. Now one of the species in this pack is brand new, another was completely redesigned, so it might as well have been brand new. And even though the Spinoraptor and the Stegoceratops do still have the same model, they've been upgraded with more skins and more animations that again, they didn't have in the first game. Throw two extra Lex skins on top and it gets complicated trying to determine if this pack is is worth as much as previous packs with all original species. But is it? Really? Not even a dollar less? Even if only because it doesn't feel right? And unfortunately, the pack isn't enough of a home run to dispel that feeling. Ankylodocus not being able to fight back, while not unexpected, is ridiculous. The only explanation for it not being able to fight is because it's a sauropod and sauropods just don't fight in the game. It's pretty problematic when your only valid explanation for something is something that in and of itself doesn't make sense. Another issue that I want to talk about is that for the first time, this feels like a pack that just isn't for everybody. Previous packs have had a pretty universal appeal, I think, especially the previous DLC, or in fact, all of the packs that we got in 2023. Whereas hybrids are a lot more polarizing, very popular with one part of the community, and rejected by another. A product doesn't have to appeal to everyone. In fact, from a marketing standpoint, it makes sense to aim a product at a specific target audience rather than trying to please everybody. That is the case here. What sucks about that is that it's a product in a limited supply line. We only get one DLC every three months. It's not like the people outside of the target audience, the people who don't like hybrids, can just go and buy something else, if they've been keeping up with collecting the DLCs as they've come out at least. Add to that the fact that we are not getting a significant free update with new content this time around, and the disappointment is very much understandable. But there is an audience for this. A lot of people are really, really hyped. Different people like different things. And I think it's a fun DLC if you are a fan of hybrids. It's not one of my favorites, but it is fun and I do think it does a good job at appealing to the target audience. I hope this showcase has given you a good impression of what the pack will add to your game. Let me know in the comments down below if you will be getting this pack day one or maybe waiting for a discount or if you're not getting it at all. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.